So first, uh, thank you, David, that uh, you made the door open for me now to talk about technology and looking back to the to the to the last 50s or 60 years <laughs> where we we saw these nice computers from the Asian century. I have to, uh, to say that in elevator technology and in vertical transportation, we have to look back the last 160 years. Because since that time, not really something new or, let me say, game-changing has happened. Of course, we use uh, computers today. We use, as well, new motor technology, drive technology, and so on. But at the end of the day, it's still a box hanging on a string, running up and down. That's an elevator. <laughs> okay, Gen ladies and gentlemen, I uh, have the pleasure to, uh, to present something, talk about uh, new approaches for uh, efficient uh, people transportation, and not only in vertical direction, and uh, if we saw a lot of these presentations in the morning already, gives us a new challenge, not only to move in a vertical direction anymore, but also move maybe in another direction. So, but at the end, it's everything is about urbanization. And this urbanization pro, uh, uh, trend which we face uh, actually is that uh, elevators, we have to face that they more or less are the bottlenecks in the buildings because they use a lot of space. And if you look into buildings with more height than 200 meters and so on, if you look to the efficiency, yeah, of the net ratio of the of the net ratio to the to the uh, core of the elevator, uh, there is not a really a high factor of efficiency. And even I remember who uh, participated yesterday evening in the in the, in the uh, reception. Yeah? If you saw this big core behind the wall, yeah, where we have standing in the room, yeah. And if you make this relation, as you see again, yeah, this is a problem we have to face. So we have increased in losses, and as, as higher the building is going up, we lost more usable space. And again, this is a conflict between, uh, let me say, a figure of merit on one hand, and also the facility net ratio, but on the other hand, the performance of the elevators to provide sufficient traffic performance as well as low uh, waiting times and times to destination. And there are two issues which are coming up. On one hand, we need less elevators to improve the efficiency. On the other hand, we have to provide more elevators to make uh, the performance possible. So I will just catch up a little bit about what we are now actually in what is stand state of the art so far. Uh, and what we are using in the elevator industry to optimize the situation a little bit. Of course, we know that we started already years ago with a kind of zoning, which means at the end to organize the call assignment a little bit in a better way to reduce at the end uh, some 10% or 15% of, of the uh, shafts, uh, which is, could be uh, uh, um, extended by a situation to uh, use uh, stacked shafts to arrange one above the other and uh, to use a configuration with transfer floors and with uh, uh, shuttle elevators. This is state of the art. Um, if we go uh, even higher and if we have more zones already, then we are talking about how to increase transportation capacity. And of course, we all know this is the, uh, uh, the double deck. Uh, with a high efficiency during the upbeat time. On the other hand, a lot of masses, a lot of energy consumption during even low peak because the system is really heavy. It's very well preferred as a pre uh, express shuttle to serve sky lobbies. And what we also face that a kind of passenger irritation is when the other deck is loading or unloading, though people do not know what happens above or below. So in 2003, uh, uh, ThyssenKrupp Elevator uh, implemented a new system uh, with two cars independently running in one shaft, which is so-called twin, with the uh, effect to have a reduction of uh, capa uh, more capacity, uh, uh, extension of capacity up to 30%, and a reduction of space required up to 30% uh, as well. So, and really, an, and compared to the double deck system, because it's also a double or a multi car system, uh, optimized energy consumption. But, and this is how it works Gen uh, for, who, uh, for those who uh, belong us, uh, among, amongst us who are not familiar with, just to shift a low rise and a high rise shaft together and move it 
uh, in, in a sound system, for example, like uh, the upper car can move independently and serve independently in an upper zone, and the lower car can uh, independently serve a lower zone. Of course, the system is flexible, so both cars at the end can also serve both, uh, both zones. So, and this is, gives us already a reduction. It's, it's the first step in the right direction, but at the end, of course, there are a lot of uh, possibilities to arrange it, uh, just as a single system, but also as a zoned system, or combine it together with, with uh, sky lobbies and with a sh shuttle decks. But buildings are growing. And I think this is a very famous uh, picture that we all know. There are actual more than 200 cities worldwide with more than uh, 3 million inhabitants. And since 2000, uh, the number of high-rise buildings have uh, more than 200 meters has dribbled. Megacities without high-rise buildings are not imaginable, furthermore. And of course, high-rise buildings need a vertical transportation infrastructure for going live. But what is the problem? And what, is, what challenges the industry? First of all, if the buildings are going higher, also the travel height has to go higher. At the end of the day, also the roping, the suspension means of the conventional elevator has to be, has to be extended. And there we already reach the limits. Because up to a certain height, <clears throat> depending on the masses of the whole system, the weight of the elevator rope itself and the compensation rope itself limits its, uh, 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 reach its limits to carry itself, their own weight. Of course, now we have new te technology. Uh, we just so saw in the, in, in the movie before, uh, coming with ultra, uh, with ultra rope systems, which helps in some cases, but still the system is hanging on a rope. So, <clears throat> to eliminate rope suspen uh, suspension should not limit our vertical hosting anymore, means at the end we can extend travel heights with no limits. So, and if we build it up in a sectional way, we can extend the system as well, even not maybe for a first step, even we can, if the building will grow up maybe 10 years later or so, we can just add in the same, 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 uh, same system just a new track for the elevator system and uh, uh, the same cars can run uh, for a high, uh, larger height. So, secondly, the shapes of high-rise buildings. Up to now, more or less, the shafts have to be more or less vertical. There is no exception, because if you go not vertical, the rope, of course, it's, uh, let me say, has its own being own behavior and will touch uh, very quickly some equipment in the shaft or even the walls. So, uh, architects always uh, tell us to say, hey, guys, you are limiting our ideas, our creativity, mm -hmm. because we cannot go like this or like this. Yeah? We always go too straight. Of course, a system without any ropes this could uh, uh, provide also a system, transportation system for inclined hoisting. Buildings who are stretching up, of course, has to be elastic due to structural reasons. Yeah? Therefore, it automatically, if you talk about 300, 400, 500 meters even higher, we have the building will move. It will move extremely. And of course, we can imagine what this means, again, for a rope system. And uh, without ropes, of course, we would not cause any uh, uh, rope sway effects in uh, super high-rise buildings. And of course, as said before, we only can move up today in a vertical direction. There is no possibility to link in a horizontal direction to, to uh, other facility. And also, going with a new technology, it would help uh, to, uh, go, uh, to move uh, passengers horizontally and vertically, vertically with the same system. So, these are the challenges, and we have to eliminate, as an industry, these limitations by a groundbreaking technology. And what's it? I will start with this movie, because we all know what it is. This is a maglev train in Shanghai. So maybe I can shorten it already. So we take just the linear motor technology, which up to, day, up to now is going in a, in a horizontal direction and turn it by 90 degrees or something between. 
and use it as an elevation system for a new uh, uh, passenger transportation system. I would not mention it as an elevator because it has no ropes. I would mention it and say it's a vertical and horizontal transportation system. And of course we can use the linear motor advantages and for those who are not so much familiar with this, think about we have a rotating motor, conventional motor, we cut it between and we in real, uh, it in, 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 in the plan, yeah, so we have a linear motor. Very simply explained, but of course there are small challenges behind. Nevertheless, it's a simple way how we can extend uh, the, the <coughs> travel height and uh, also to have uh, no rotational uh, masses then again in the system, which on, on the other hand will provide a reduction in, in energy consumption. And of course, we, there's, at the end, there's also no limitation in speed. So what is now the multi, as we call it, multi? Yeah, it's a revolutionary idea, but it's not just an elevator. As I mentioned already, it's an, a vertical and horizontal transportation system. We have no cables and no traveling cables, which are, by the way, also a problem if you go to high-rise buildings, yeah, because the swaying system. Of course, we can apply a totally new technology like linear motor drive, but also a system how we can move one car from one shaft to the other ones or to an extended area. We call it exchanger, which moves the cabin from one shaft to the other or even into a garage so the system can park the cars like in a skiing gondola, for example. Uh, you know, according to the demand, there will be more cabins in the loop or not. And we will use uh, a new lightweight materials like a car uh, a carbon fiber, for example, for the cabin, aluminum uh, for the cabin door, and so on. So it's a shaft changing system with multiple cabins. So this is not only two or four cabins running. This is up to, just to say a figure, th uh, 30 or 32. Uh, but at the end, there is no limitation. And of course, we can move horizontally. And the f basic concept up to now is to go in loops. So we have two shafts as a basic arrangement. And in one shaft, the cabins are going up. In the, in, in the, in the other shaft, the cabins are, are moving down. And may, some of you may have heard about this Pater Noster principle. This was a nice idea in the 70s, especially in Europe, an uh, elevator system with a lot of cabins hanging on a, on a uh, chain. And this just was like a merry-go-round, always going up and down, unfortunately without doors and without uh, cabin doors, so it was at the end not safe. But from the handling capacity standpoint, yeah, it was the best system ever designed. So very, very uh, more or less no waiting times. And basically this is part of this concept now we are using here. So the uh, basic approach is to have a circulating system which is available every 15 to 30 seconds. Uh, the safety concept is based on our twin technology because we have to provide and to make sure that of course the, there is no collision between the both uh, cabins. And of course, so actually we talk about target speeds up to five or even maybe seven meters per second, but looking more in the future, I think there will be a development also for, for higher speeds. So actually I, I deal uh, eight to 10 cabins with, uh, in, on one side, means 16 to 20 in total in one loop on a uh, 300 meters uh, uh, height. So the left from the movie you see all, saw already, this is uh, an extract from the, from the uh, slide of, uh, of David. And to, to show you that it's not just an idea and on, on some power, uh, PowerPoint slides, yeah, you can see here on the right side, which is our uh, one to three scaled model, which is running in our research center in Gijon uh, since uh, uh, autumn last year, very uh, successfully. And you see here exactly how it runs and how it works. By the way, here, what is here, the cabin number one is standing in a garage, as I mentioned before, so we can add and remove as necessary. So what is the basic concept between how we can move from, a, from the vertical direction into the uh, uh, horizontal direction? The fundamental idea is to move the whole motor system. 
to move the whole modal system by a turning device, which we call exchanger, up to 90 degrees or something between, means at the end we call not only vertically and horizontally, but also in an inclined direction. So this shows again how it, how it works, this exchanger model. So this is the basic idea. Here are, we show with only these two tracks, yeah? but of course this number of tracks can be extended. So now I want a little bit to talk about the concepts, which kind of application we can think about in the future. Coming from the, more from the view into the public transportation. What do we have there? We are very used to have so-called long distance trains. Nobody would go take a train from, from Shanghai to, to Hong Kong, uh, which, is, uh, which will stop at every station. Never. So we have long distance trains, we stop, have uh, a stop at a few stations, and then we change over and we move over to local transportation systems, buses, metros, taxis, whatever. And the same concept, we, I think, if we think about really high-rise, super high-rise and mega high-rise buildings, to have this uh, circulating system as a shuttle, running as a so-called uh, long-distance VT system, and to move over in sky lobbies to local uh, elevators, could be very conventional ones, so you see it on the right side, um, how it could be organized. So we will transfer this idea, what we have and we are used to have from, from our public uh, uh, mobility into this, uh, let me say, city in the city. And of course we talk about different conceptions. We can do it even with, uh, in the combination with, uh, with uh, um, a machine roomless elevator or we can do it even with, uh, with uh, a combination of this uh, um, shuttle system in combination with a twin which provides us another, safe, uh, uh, another uh, saving of uh, space. So I give you just a figure. Uh, we did it for a real, uh, uh, for a real project in, in the Middle East to compare it with a double tech system, for example. And the system was definitely to reduce in total between 45 and 50% of the core space. So other ideas, of course, go Horizontal, go vertical, means also to link, to be, uh, to be able to link buildings, for example. Yeah? So-called sky bridges, which are very uh, famous coming up now in new ideas from the architectural standpoint, or to have a link between buildings in the underground, uh, or something between. This is a new idea which will, and there are a lot of possibilities for the future where we see really a chance that this technology is the right way, the right solution uh, to, to uh, go on. So this is just an idea how to link buildings also to metro stations, yeah, or to the sub, to the sub ground. Of course, to summarize here, what about the multi, no building height, shape restrictions, this is a continuous passion transportation with short waiting times. We have a reduced footprint. We have more uptime availability because we have more cabins in the loop. Less passenger queuing enables also to reduce lobby areas, by the way, which is really an issue if you look to the dense situation in buildings, especially here in Asia Pacific. If in the morning it's, everything is crowded, because, but if you have a continuous traffic flow, a continuous uh, cabin availability, the queue will uh, be much lower. We have a, a significant gain of facility net ratio, and uh, yeah, that's it for the multi. So, but I will finish my speech just to move a little bit on and, and to, to look a little bit also in the, in the direct horizontal uh, passenger transportation. We all know what this happens uh, today with a, a density in the traffic and so on. And it's clear that the public, uh, uh, the public transportation system like metros will be really the future in all the cities. But there's still an issue how we can bring the peoples from one station to the other station. Very complicated, sometimes we have to go stairs up, stairs down and so on and so on. It's really not convenient. And there, well, there is a, a new idea how we can do it. This is a so-called, we call it axle system, which is an accelerating moving walk. You know what is a moving walk? We know this also from the, from the airports. 
normally in a, in a horizontal direction. And now the idea is inducing is that every pellet will be accelerated from a normal speed if you enter to the, if you enter to the moving rock with 0.5 meter per second, this is normal standard, international standard, and then you will be accelerated up to uh, two meter or even 2.5 meter per second. And uh, of course, this brings a lot of, of, of time gain. And at the end of the day, we can extend the whole, the whole uh, uh, story up to a length of 500 meters. So these are some figures about that up to two uh, meter per second, which means 7.2 kilometer per hour, uh, a high rate on, on capacity, uh, up to 500 meters. And of course you can uh, uh, bring it in series. So in total up to one kilometer or even 1.5 kilometer. So it could be used for express metro lines to, to link this, uh, the, the, uh, the stations together. or even bring people from, from other areas, from other facilities, also to the, to the metro station. Possibilities at airports to link the different terminals in a very convenient way. Make the system very quick and f uh, very fast for the people. And of course, a lot of other applications for urban development means access, uh, link buildings and public places together or uh, link together the transportation hubs, explore vertical cities, which is also something we really a few into the future, and reduce the transit in exhibition centers, facility tame parks, and so on. So to give you an idea what this means, you see the, so the guys here on the, on, the, on the Excel are moving very fast. This is a real photo uh, from one of the prototypes in, in Toronto Airport. And to show you the, uh, um, uh, the simulation, what this means at the end. So this is more or less real time. Yeah. So, and this could be an idea for the future, maybe not for the near future already, how we can move in our cities without cars, without taxis, make it more comfortable, but without gas and diesel and whatever. With this, I want to close. Thank you so much.